Cheers. Colin M.A.K. The Tone Wizard here, and I hope you're doing very well wherever it is that you may happen to be. I'm doing very well, and I would like to thank the new subscribers who've come to the channel the last couple of days. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments on this video or in future videos. At any rate, I have been on a little bit of an Allman Brothers kick lately, and I recently reviewed their 1972 album, Eat a Peach. You can check out that video on my channel. It's fantastic music. And in my opinion, they're probably one of the finest jam bands the world has ever known and probably the best jam band that none of us will ever see again because, of course, a number of them have passed away. But when I was making that video, I, I was reminded about some footage I saw of the Allman Brothers years ago. They were playing somewhere down south. It was an outdoor gig. It was a ton of fun. There were 70s ladies everywhere up on shoulders, bikinis going, hair bouncing around, hands clapping. It was a fantastic looking event. And they did a version of Jessica that was fantastic. And I really wanted to find that footage after reviewing Eat a Peach. So I started looking around on YouTube and I came across a video called The Allman Brothers Band playing the song South bound uh, 1-16-1982 at the University of Florida band shell. And for the record, I found this performance, which I think is part of the larger concert footage that I'd seen years ago from the same show. And I start watching the video, and Greg Allman is doing his thing. He's, you know, they're, they're not, they're not quite past their prime. This is only, you know, 10, this is be about 15 years into the Allman Brothers, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Greg is doing his thing. He's got a couple of big Leslie's rotating beside him. Um, they start off the song. Uh, Dickie Betts is dressed like your mean, drunken stepdad, older, meaner, drunken stepdad. Um, and he's ripping an amazing solo. The bassist, David Goldflies, is grooving around beside him. The band's cooking in the background. And then something happens that I think I want you to watch for yourself. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play what happens, and I'm not going to talk during it, because I want you to take it in yourself. Honest to God, I had just gotten home from a band practice and I found this footage. And when that, that guy came blasting out with that goddamn guitar, I I spat the drink that I was drinking all over myself. It it's let me know what you think of, of that in the comments. Because when I was watching that, I, I was struck by the idea that it was completely gratuitous and un unnecessary. And I don't want to be too negative about it, but I, I did not, and I mean, I, I enjoy, I'm entertained by it, but in terms of the Allman Brothers choosing to add a guitar player to their live performances, I just don't know how that conversation would have gone between Dickie and Greg. Like, I imagine Dickie calling up Greg, and he's like, Greg, I've, I've just heard this fresh new sound. You got to hear it, man. It's like a guitar, but it's a piano, and it's crazy. And I could imagine, hopefully, somebody in the band being like, well, you know, Greg already plays the keyboards why does he need a smaller version of one that you can stand up and play like a guitar when we have probably one of the best southern rock guitar players of all time and definitely alive at that point in the band already i, I don't know the rationale behind this decision but that guy comes out and does that solo and in all fairness it's not a bad guitar solo but i will ask you is there such thing as a good guitar solo I think there's a reason why guitar technology stopped at some point in, in the late 80s. And I think there's also probably a pretty good reason why there's no Jimi Hendrix of guitar playing. The obvious answer is because there's the James Brown of guitar playing. Uh, no, all kidding aside, name a famous guitar player. I, I, I Please, please do. Now, I don't just want to just bash this guy. Um, so I thought it'd be a good idea to, to look up what was going on in the band and maybe who this guy was and to see if he was a, a famous keyboard player in his own right somehow. So I did a little research and I found an article that was written by 
Alan Paul, who's an author of One Way Out, the inside story of the Allman Brothers Band. And he kind of he kind of articulated what I kind of suspected was going on in this video. Pretty much everyone agrees that the Allman Brothers' the low point was their second album for Artista Records, 1980's Brothers of the Road. So this is the um, the album that they were touring during the song, uh, during during this performance that I watched. And it's slight poppy lead single, Straight From The Heart. The band had fired the great Jamoin, who I believe was their previous drummer by then, and were trudging along, trying hard to recapture a spark during an era that was just not interested. I cover all this in his book. In conversations with Jamon, Dickie Betts, Greg Allman, Butch Trucks, the much maligned synth guitar player Mike Lawler, and uh, bassist uh, Dave Goldflies, and then manager John Sher, among others. Everyone looks back with horror and regret in various mixes. So this was apparently a low point in their career. And right around this time, I think that synth sound was really starting to take over popular music. And I think that maybe this kind of represents an era where the Allman Brothers were kind of past their sort of peak relevance and were trying to incorporate a newer sound maybe um, to get this thing going. I, I just, I don't understand it. I, it's, it's a bad sound. And I, 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 can't, I can't understand bringing that on board with the Allman Brothers. These are Southern rock guys, right? And I also feel bad for this guy, Mike Lawless, uh, Lawler, Mike Lawler, um, because I just picture him being like, you know, I got this guitar. This is going to be the next big thing. I just had Greg Allman and Dickie Betts fucking call me up. And uh, it's, you know, I, I cannot wait to show these guys what I can do. And I imagine he probably got a business card made and thought his career was going to be done as the the... South Southern Jam Rock's premier guitar guy, studio and tour. Uh, I picture he probably had a guitar tech, and this guy, you know, he got hired, and he, he probably called his wife on the phone. Daphne, we're not gonna need to worry about money anymore. We're I'm I'm in with the almonds, and uh, yeah, I, I don't mean to be harsh. I I tried to look up who this guy was, uh, Mike Lawler. I I found a biography of him on a website that was just blank and the Wikipedia doesn't have much on him either. I think when you click the link, it just goes to the Allman Brothers page. And and I don't want to be mean. The guy, he, he rips it. He's totally committed. But why? You know, why? It's the Jurassic Park question. You know, you, you were too busy wondering if you could to stop to wonder if you should. Something along those lines um, that were, were uttered by a, a shirtless Jeff Jeff Goldblum. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Because that was truly a what the fuck moment for me in the context of the Almond Brothers that I know and love. And uh, please, if you've got anything else along those lines, send it in. I'd like to take a look. And uh, I, I do have some other stuff that I'm going to be taking a look at that people have sent in. I've, I've listened to a couple albums. I'm hoping to get those out on the channel. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this video or that guitar solo or the guitar in general, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you feel like it, if you don't, don't. But anyways, I'm, uh, I'm going to drink some more premium Pilsner and uh and relax into this evening take very good care of yourself cheers